Thanksgiving, everyone, wherever you are and wherever you celebrate Thanksgiving Day today or tomorrow. First of all, let me say that I am very sorry that we had to cancel the indoor in-person worship services in October due to the rising case numbers in Edmonton. It was a tough decision because we all are craving for seeing each other again and talking to each other again in person. And we will do this again, I'm very sure about this. But we had to make the decision to keep us all safe and protected. So let us celebrate Thanksgiving in our homes again, in our living rooms, in our kitchens, wherever you are, as we are gathered to worship the living God, who calls us to a banquet like we have been summoned to a wedding, to a feast of life and light. From the streets and the byways, God has invited us. We have come to the banquet that has no end. We are gathered to worship in the name of God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, you set before us every day a bounty of good things. Bring us to your feasting table, hungry for your word, eager to rebuild the cities you have made and ready to receive strangers, so that we celebrate at all times and in all places the peace which is life in you. Amen. Hello children and happy Thanksgiving. You know, I'm at church today and you know at Thanksgiving Sundays, which are special Sundays, our church is often beautifully decorated. Uh, perhaps you remember big pumpkins and more. Because Thanksgiving is a day where people say thank you for everything they have received, for food, for pumpkins, for pumpkin pie, for turkey, for mashed potatoes, for a home, for blankets. 
And this year, the church is decorated with special blankets. They are called quilts, and it's just, they are just beautiful. And a quilt is a special blanket because it consists out of several individual and singular pieces. And as this blanket is. So, the story I would like to tell you today is a story about a grandmother, her name is Anna, and her daughter, her name is Maria. And Maria has a child. It, the child is four or five years old. And um, Maria said, oh, I think my child will have a difficult life because these are difficult times right now. So I would like to do him a special favor. He needs something special. And she went to her grandmother, Anna, and said, Anna, can we do something together for my child? And Anna said, yeah, let's sew for him a special blanket. You know, let's gather some textiles and put the textiles together into a special, special blanket. And let's put our hopes into this blanket. So they put hope into the blanket because when they saw this textile, they said, my child shall never lose hope. And they put love, love in the blanket. So when they put these together, they said, my child shall never lose the love to the people. And then they put warmth into the blanket because they said, this blanket shall give warmth to my child, even if it's very, very, very cold. And they put peace into this blanket because they said hope and love and peace and warmth belong together. And one day my child will need all of this. So they created this special quilt, this blanket, and gave it to the young child, whose name, by the way, was Jesus. And Jesus took the blanket and wrapped the blanket around his shoulder, and he felt warm and protected, and he saw the love of his family, and he felt, felt peace. He felt so warm and safe that he said, nothing will happen to me because there will always love, hope, peace, and warmth around me. And of course, we know that Jesus had not an easy life, and at the end it was quite brutal, but it had a happy end, of course. But I'm sure that this blanket, sewn by his grandmother and mother, filled with love, hope, and peace, helped him through the most difficult times. Do you have a blanket like this, or a quilt even? I would like to know about it. But I also would like to tell you that you are safe and loved and protected by God. And God is sometimes like a big, huge, warm blanket for us, a blanket that protects us and gives us love, hope, and peace. Shall we pray? Gracious God, thank you for the gifts. Thank you for food. Thank you for love. Thank you for hope. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for the turkey tonight and the mashed potatoes and the desserts and whatever, God, we will eat today. Thank you for everything. And at the end, we all say, Amen.
23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here ends the reading. The reading is from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 to 9. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lord, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Here endeth the reading. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
According to Matthew chapter 22. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, tortured them, and killed them. And the king was enraged, and he sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? and he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Word of the Living God Grace be with you, and peace from him who is, who was, and who will come again, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends, we have been listening to the reading of the Gospel and now let's have a closer look into this Gospel from today. There's a generous offer being given by a king. A feast is being prepared and the generosity of the king is so great that invitations are given three times. The first time people reject the offer. The second time the king explains that a lot of work has gone into preparing this feast and everything is ready. But all are too busy and find excuses, farming and business and cooking and taking care of, of the errands or walking a dog. Well, um, Jesus continues, and those invited kill the messengers and the king sends the army and destroys the murderers and burns their city. And that certainly makes it thrilling and the listeners surely paid attention to what may follow because what follows is an open invitation to anyone who wants to come. Everybody is welcome to the king's banquet. Everybody. The king's table offers food for everyone and everybody, the good and the bad. And there are enough chairs or cushions or mats or benches, whatever you need to join. And this could be the end of our story, and it might be a happy end even, but instead it takes again an ugly turn. The king rejects one of the new guests for not wearing the right clothing. Throw him outside, he says, throw him outside into the darkness, for many are invited, but few are chosen. Oh no, difficult to think about it and even to preach about it, today. And here's the thing. In this story, in this parable, we are catching a glimpse of an intense conflict within the author's community. We know that uh, Matthew wrote this gospel. The author is Matthew. We don't know if he founded the Christian community or if he lived within a newly founded Christian community. But he and his Christian community are caught up in a struggle with their Israelite kin and family members. And the struggle is about the question whether to be faithful 
to the God of Abraham and Sarah alone and how to be to be good how to be a good Jewish person or whether to join the new movement around Jesus of Nazareth. So we are catching a glimpse of an intense conflict and fight about the question if to believe in this new movement, that is, if to believe in Jesus being the Christ or not, or if to uh, still appreciate and live the religion traditions you grew up with, the Jewish rituals you are so familiar with and acquainted with. And Matthew, a strong believer in Jesus Christ, is willing to leave his Jewish family and not even to leave them, but to condemn them. Matthew is willing to say that if you don't believe in Christ, if you don't wear, so to say, Christ's clothing, you don't belong to my community anymore. You don't belong to me because only few are chosen. I think too often choices are either condemn those who believe differently or don't believe at all or um, feel like we are somehow being un unfaithful by not condemning, condemning them. But um, hey, we have a long, long history condemning those who believe in different ways. And I not only talk about people of different faiths, but about Christians against Christians, Lutheran against Catholics, Evangelical against Lutherans, Lutherans against Lutherans. We have a long history of hurting people who, whom we think of not the right people, who are thinking different than we are thinking and who believe perhaps in a different kind of Jesus Christ as we do. And we have a long history of separating ourselves from those others, a long history of thinking in us and them. And instead of finding compromises or bridging the gaps, we are still on the road and uh, to condemn and to separate us. And uh, on this road, we often seem to forget that we all are disciples of the same Christ, right? that we all are disciples of Jesus and that even in this parable, in this story, the good news is that God invites all, all, everyone to participate in the feast, the good and the bad. And we are friends, disciples of Jesus, followers who see, especially in the life, in the death and in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, not only how just how far God will go to make this invitation of grace and compassion, but also that God's words of love and forgiveness are more powerful than any words of punishment, hate and fear. So Thanksgiving today in Canada, our choice whom to welcome or whom not is limited by COVID-19 due to the rising case numbers. And this is hard, I know, hard on many. And this is hard on us who are really prepared a live service, an in-person service today and are now forced to stay at home. But we do this. We do this for the common good, for the well-being not only of those who are next to us, but also of those whom we don't know. And at the same time, we are starving for good news. We are starving for being with people face to face, starving for hugs. As one person recently wrote to me, when this is over, the person wrote, I would love to have a warm, tender hug and be held so long until I am ready to let go. And we are starving for the generosity of being loved and giving love. And we are starving for the good, the really good news, not the thin good news that secures my well-being and my comfort at the expense of other people's well-being or health. 
So, in these times, could it be any more obvious that we, all of us, every single one of us, are wholly dependent on each other for our, all of our survival and well-being? That the future of creation itself depends on human beings recognizing our fundamental interconnectedness and acting in concert for the good of all? Perhaps that means thanksgiving, giving thanks today, that the harvest of the fields of this world thrive only when everyone will get enough to eat. The time for selfishness and self-centeredness and greed is over. We have to see that we are a part of each other and then we, that we have to take care of each other that every one of us needs to show how much we care for each other and in the process care for ourselves, for the goodness and for the good and the well-being of all. Because, as the Apostle Paul so clearly wrote in his letter to the Corinthians, if one suffers, everybody suffers. Or let, it say, let me say it differently in the words of Martin Luther King. And he wrote... I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. This is the way our world is made. So let us be grateful for being a part of this way our world is made. Let us be grateful for God the Creator. Let us be thankful for every relationship we have, near or far, and uh, that are we able to take care of. Let us be thankful for the net of friends and family and people around us. So, what are you thankful for today? The peace of God, which, surpassing, which is surpassing all of our understanding, will fill our hearts and minds with the generosity and love of Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to move into a prayer posture that is most comfortable for you as we share in a time of prayer together. When I offer the call of God of harvest, God of the slow ripening, be welcome to respond with, hear our prayer. God, in this hard year, we're stumbling towards Thanksgiving. There has been lots to trip us up. A pandemic, economic meltdowns, social isolation, injustice on so many fronts, including Black Lives Matter, Me Too, and the ongoing call for justice from Indigenous peoples. Not to mention hurricanes, 
forest fires and climate change. And this is not even including the everyday sorrows that haven't let up for one minute. We offer 2020 to you in all of our struggle, chaos, weariness, and yes, our joys. God of harvest, God of the slow ripening, hear our prayer. On this Thanksgiving, we stumble on the words and we need to take some deep breaths now to pause and to consider what we are thankful for in our hearts, wherever we might be, out loud or in silence. God of harvest, God of the slow ripening, hear our prayer. Thank you for life, for bringing us here this far. Thank you for those who have sacrificed to help others, healthcare and essential workers, teachers, and everyone who has toiled over time to make a difference. Thank you for your provision good earth has yielded up its bounty and there is food in grocery stores, even if we sometimes do have to line up for it. God of harvest, God of the slow ripening, hear our prayer. Thank you that this fall season still delights. The taste of the crisp, delicious apple, the gold of grain pouring out of the combine, the fragrance of damp leaves, the sound of geese honking their way south, the feel of cool wind and the sun still warm on our skin. God of harvest, God of the slow ripening, hear our prayer. God of hope, we need your help to get through this coming year. Help us find a vaccine. In the meantime, help our communities pull together Forgive us when we are irritated and judgmental of the choices other people are making. Give us all patience as we wash our hands for the millionth time, as we mask up, as we make hard choices not to mingle and socialize in person. We lift up those in our communities who are sick or are in need of your touch. For all of those friends and family living at Good Samaritan Mill Woods, for John and Ursula, for Melita, for Otto and Irene. We pray for all of our friends experiencing homelessness that, as city and provincial officials discuss their fates and living arrangements, that they would know they are our family, that they are loved and beloved and they are already wondrous children of God. God of harvest, God of the slow ripening, hear our prayer. God of the harvest, God of the slow ripening, on this Thanksgiving Sunday, renew our energy to hope, to find joy in the daily small things that still surround us. May these small things bring healing to our weary souls and comfort in times of loneliness and distress. Thank you for your love, your presence, and your unending faithfulness in our lives. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Today, we are using the version from the New Zealand Anglican Prayer Book. You are welcome to follow along using the subtitles on your screen. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. 
In times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Just a couple of announcements for you today. Our monthly youth committee meeting is next Sunday at 1 p.m. We have planned it in person, however, we will move to Zoom if we need to. Same day, same time. Stay tuned for that. I will be taking a few days off next week. If you require any kind of pastoral support, Pastor Ingrid will be here for whatever you might need. Receive God's blessing today. May the beauty of God be reflected in your eyes. The love of God be reflected in your hands. The wisdom of God be reflected in your words and the knowledge of God flow from your heart that all might see and seeing believe. In the name of the Creator, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.